Hello dear saints, it's your friend Pastor Roy again and uh, I have bad news and then I have empathy and then in my case I have good news. In March of this year I went to my general practitioner as I do every year to get a, uh, a physical and uh, she saw something on my forehead, I guess it was over here someplace. She said, that looks like a hot spot. And so she sent me to the dermatologist. And I went to the dermatologist and uh, he uh, checked <laughs> every square inch of my anatomy. And I've got a lot of square inches to be checked. And uh, he, he froze this hot spot off with some uh, liquid nitrogen. And uh, he said, oh, well, that's really nothing to be concerned about. And then he continued to check and he looked at my back and he said, well, I don't like the looks of this. And I had never laid eyes on this because it's on my back and uh, he says um, I'd like to take a uh, sample of this and send it up out for pathology I said yes of course well they did their scraping or whatever they did and uh, they sent it out for, for pathology and he indicated that could be from uh, somewhere around uh, 10 days to two weeks before he gets the report back. But if he, uh, if, if, uh, he gets it earlier and it's uh, something ominous, he'd call me. Well, I mean, Whitfield, Virginia, with uh, our pastor Chad there, and uh, the coronavirus pandemic was just being realized at the beginning of March. And so we're staying in a hotel and I get a call on my cell phone from my dermatologist. He says the pathology report came back and uh, it's a melanoma. Well, I uh, had in my mind that the melanomas are something trivial. And, uh, you know, you just... Um, treat it, then it's gone. Well, I found is there's nothing of the sort. There are several stages of the melanoma, but a melanoma grows inward uh, beyond the epithelial or the skin tissue, and it can go into the lymph nodes, and from there could go to the lymph system, and then travel throughout the body. And uh, so I did, uh, he, he indicated that uh, I need to uh, see a, a surgeon and he recommended one, but I had had uh, uh, surgery <clears throat> prior to this and I liked my surgeon, so uh, I thought, well, maybe I'll use him. But anyway, <clears throat> Uh, we're talking about the beginning of March here, and uh, the earliest the surgeon could see me was April 30th. Well, that sounds like two months away, and this critter on my back is uh, growing its tentacles inward beyond my epithelial tissue into my new lymph nodes, as I was um, suspecting. But you know, at that moment in time, or in that season of time, better said, you know, I realized that those who get uh, what the emotions are of those who get a cancer report have a uh, doctor say, you've got cancer, because that's exactly what melanoma is. It's the most aggressive form of skin cancer. 
Well, so as I uh, did my research and uh, not knowing the uh, how rapidly this thing grows inward, I want that critter out of my body as quick as possible. And uh, April 30th, I don't know how fast it grows, but I didn't like too much. In fact, my, uh, my dermatologist says, uh, you know, when I told him April 30th, he says, well, that'll be okay, but uh, don't go to Romania uh, without having that removed. So I do some do some research, and there are several stages, and uh, really stage stage four uh, means that it has metastasized or traveled throughout the body. Well, you know, my my mind is racing. I'm thinking, you know, is this it? I had no idea how far this thing had progressed, uh, and so on. So uh, I'm, I'm looking for some comfort from my dermatologist. So he gave me his private phone number, and I accessed that. And uh, I, I said they're asking for numbers, and I guess these numbers indicate the depth of the progress of the melanoma. And he said, well, uh, the number is 0 0.8. I didn't know what that number meant, but I began to look it up, and it, it sounded as though it's um, a newly formed melanoma. He said it could have been in, on my body for a year or so. Well, I must admit that uh, I was uh, going back to my root verse, Romans 8.28, I said, Lord, somehow this will work out for good. Uh, I don't like this feeling. I don't like these thoughts. But you know, it, it drove me to realize that, you know, at 78 years of age, I've outlived my mentors, spiritually speaking, and uh, Nobody would say, you know, well, Roy died young at uh, 78, but rather, hopefully, you know, he, he lived a full life. Well, I, I, I didn't feel I'd lived a full life yet. I know Jesus said it's finished on the cross, and the Apostle Paul, he said, what, uh, I have kept the faith. Uh, I have completed my course, and henceforth there's a crown of righteousness awaiting me, well, I had no sense of it is finished or I have finished my course. And no, sir, I felt like just the beginner. <clears throat> anyway, I, I pursued it somewhat and I called the surgeon and I said, uh, listen, if you have any cancellations, you know, I can come at a drop of a hat. Uh, any cancellations and so on. Well, you know, it, it, uh, I got a couple phone calls and so on and got closer and closer. And uh, f the final phone call was uh, in the beginning of April. Well, that sounds like uh, one month closer than the originally. So uh, I made an appointment to go to the surgeon's office for consultation. And, you know, with the precautions with the virus, I had to stay in my car until they were ready to see me, not wait in the waiting room with possibly anybody else. <sighs> so, um, it was a very pleasant visit under the circumstances. Uh, everybody seems young to me and seemed like a, a young doctor. But uh, uh, he took a look at the... The, uh, the wound left over healing now from the original scraping for the biopsy. And although this was scheduled to be a consultation, he says, let's take it out. So we go into a different room and he shot me with some local anesthetic. And, uh, you know, I was glad to get this critter out. And, you know, he starts to cut 
And you know, I don't know if the anesthetic had uh, fully engaged or what, but you know, I could, I could feel occasionally the cutting of the scalpel. And, uh, but you know, I kept my mouth shut. I didn't tell him that, ouch, no, I kept my mouth shut because I didn't want him to, uh, I, I, I thought of the song, deep and wide, deep and wide, and I wanted him to go deep and I wanted him to go wide in order to get everything that was there out. So I endured a little pain. I kept my mouth shut. It was within the tolerable range, I guess. And uh, so I wanted to take a picture of the critter. And uh, it had already re been removed from the, uh, the uh, surgery area. And so I didn't get a picture of what he sent out. But uh, he said, come back in two weeks. He stitched me up. I felt that too. And uh, I understand he was a cosmetic surgeon. And, uh, but he specializes in uh, uh, skin cancers as well. So, well, anyway, he sewed me up like a cosmetic surgeon would. I mean, very small sutures and so on, that by the time it heals, I understand it's almost invisible. Well, I go back in two weeks, and of course, it was sent out for pathology. I think I left that out. Uh, it was sent out for pathology, and he says, you know, it'll take from uh, 10 days to two weeks. <clears throat> well, I come into the office <clears throat> for the results of the pathology, and he says, well, let's start uh, before he was going to remove the stitch. He says, let's start from right from the beginning with the, here are the words, good news. How sweet those words sounded at that point in time. And he said, the pathology report came back and you are clear. In other words, the margins of the um, sample that was sent out for pathology, there was no cancer uh, anywhere there. And so therefore, there would be no cancer beyond that uh, into my body. So he removed the stitches and so on. And uh, so within uh, less than a month from the diagnosis of a melanoma to the all clear uh, took less than a month. I continued to do research on melanomas and because I uh, am a redhead uh, by the freckles on every square inch and uh, I did have red hair and I don't use any hair coloring to make it white, it just happened. <clears throat> and in my research I realized that during the Pensacola Revival, the uh, primary evangelist there, I think his name was Steve Hill, well he had died uh, a few years earlier at a rather young age. I, if I recall correctly, he was 63 years of age. And as I dug into it deeply, he died of melanoma. Oh my God. I, uh, I uh, realized then how serious a melanoma could be. And because of my red hair and my fair skin, I was particularly vulnerable to skin cancers. Uh, and. Uh, so the, the future looks like every uh, six months to a year uh, I, I need to get a full inspection because once I've had a melanoma with my fair skin uh, can be back. And by the way, for, for your in, information, uh, if you, you've got to be careful about lying in the sun. I, uh, he hypothesized that this melanoma really began in principle when I was a teenager and I was uh, trying to tan. I never tan. I bronze a little bit, but because of my skin 
uh, type and color. You know, I've I've never tanned. Uh, my brother and my sister, you know, they can cook up a tan. So you you've got to be careful, and I understand sunscreen can reduce the possibility. But there was a possibility that the melanoma came from when I was a teenager, and um, so the, so dear saints, be careful. Uh, and uh, I uh, certainly would uh, not uh, be against anybody, you know, getting a thorough dermatological examination. So, praise the Lord. Uh, but I, I, I realize that um, we don't know what's cooking in our body. We don't know you know what's going on all the time it's you don't always feel and see you feel uh, and sense sometimes things can creep up on you in my case from the back and uh, so we want to go to heaven but uh, at least in my case I don't want to go anytime soon I've got a vision I've got a dream I've got a job to accomplish and I feel like just a beginner but dear saints, I wanted to share that with you that, you know, I am now a cancer survivor. Unthinkable. But, uh, praise God. The best is yet to come. So just let me uh, add this before I, I end. A man by the name of Norm Vincent Peale, he was the eternal optimist. He, uh, he was a positive thinker. In fact, he wrote the book, The Power of Positive Thinking. And uh, he was a, a fine Christian man, but um, there are reasons why he titled the book that way. And uh, so uh, he was visiting in the hospital, and uh, uh, this man, he was, he was on his deathbed. He was dying. And um, so he says to the man, he says, well, you know, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. The man says, but they... The, the, in his aspirant voice, he says, they give me uh, one day, maybe overnight, before I die. And uh, Dr. Peel said, well then, the best is yet to come. Because that dying man was a believer in Jesus Christ. And so am I. And I trust you are as well. The best is yet to come. Thanks for listening. God bless you. I'll be back.